Hey everybody, Queer Queries launches today. I'm so excited to share the show with you guys. I'm ecstatic for you guys to hear these incredible stories, listen to these wonderful humans I have on the show, and learn about the amazing queer community that I love so much. So yeah, the show is out. Go listen if you haven't. Um, in addition to the launch of the show, I wanted to do a special bonus video episode because what show, what queer themed show, wouldn't be complete without a Pride themed episode. So on this episode, I'm going to talk to you about what is Pride? Where did Pride come from? Why do we celebrate it? Uh, but I'm also going to talk to you about why this Pride in particular is more important than the ones we've celebrated in recent years. So get strapped in, get your coffee, get your tea, get a fan, get whatever you may need, uh, because I'm about to give you a little queer history lesson. So here we go. So, for those who don't know, today is the 50-year anniversary of the Christopher Street Liberation Day Parade, or the first Gay Pride March. And the Liberation Day Parade was created as a way to commemorate the Stonewall Uprisings, which is what is coined as the start of the modern gay liberation movement. So the march lasted about 50, 51 or so blocks, and went from Christopher Street all the way up to... Uh, Sheep's Meadow in Central Park, where the protesters would go on to stage what was called a gay in, which is exactly what you think. It was based off of the sit-ins of the civil rights movement. So like I said, Pride was started as a way to commemorate Stonewall. And the reason Stonewall is given the title of starting the gay liberation movement is uh, as opposed to prior events like the Black Cat protests or the annual reminder days is because Stonewall was the first time that queer people all united under one cause retaliated against police brutality and harassment and uh, social discrimination that they faced on the regular. And it was also the first queer protest that garnered a national audience. Um, and Stonewall was kind of made to be somewhat of a of a myth after it happened, particularly by the people who were organizing the Christopher Street Liberation Day Parade because they wanted to create this kind of like buzz around the event and make it more of this like big event as opposed to just a, a small commemorative vigil. Um, I mean, it's also very, very mythified because there's so many stories that surround what happened in like the early morning hours of June 28th. Um, some say that it was Judy Garland's death, which was a week prior and her funeral was the day prior and all of the gays were in hysterics and lashed out. Uh, as tragic as Judy Garland's death was and to the queer community, and it was such a loss, I don't think that is why Stonewall happened. I think Stonewall happened because queer people were so fed up with having to comply to paying off the mafia who were in charge of Stonewall to pay off the cops so they wouldn't have to be subject to all of these unannounced raids where they were either having to hide their identity or be stripped of their clothes and be forced to prove their identity. And the event also is still a myth because, like I said, we still don't really know the exact turn of events of what happened. But what we do know is that Sylvia Rivera, Marsha B. Johnson, and Stormy DeLarvery, were, who were three uh, gay pride um, leaders, uh, were all there. And that it was Stormy's altercation with the police that kind of got the uprising started and caused the first brick to be thrown. So, you're asking, why am I telling you all this? Well, I wanted to paint a very clear image of what the first moment of Pride looked like. It wasn't this theatrical event where there were kick lines and heels flying, which is also what some people say, or gay men lashing out at over the fact Judy Garland died, or started by a bunch of cisgender white gay men, like it was very inaccurately portrayed in the Stonewall movie in 2015, I think. No, the Stonewall Inn was where the deemed lowest of the low of the queer community, black and brown trans women, drag queens, sex workers, butch lesbians, could all go and 
feel comfortable in this community and feel pride in themselves and in each other. And the ones that were there were the ones who had no choice but to be out and proud about who they were. I mean, they were the ones that were doing pride from the get-go, long before it became a, a much more appropriated version of the pride we see today. So back to what I said at the beginning, why is this pride more important? What does pride mean in 2020? And I read an article recently in the New York Times that talked about this very thing, and it also put it in conjunction with the fact uh, of quarantine and also the fact that this country is finally waking up to the injustices that black and brown uh, people face on a day-to-day -day basis. And it was largely because of this article that I wanted to make this episode. And one of my favorite quotes from the episode is this, or from the episode, from the article, uh, was from Thomas, Thomas Page McGee, and this is what it is. The most powerful kind of pride is the pride of ancestry. And that for me is it in a nutshell. That for me is why I came to fall in love with being queer, with being gay, with being queer, the queer community in the first place. It was through getting to see the pride of my queer ancestors and their fearlessness to be themselves, especially the ones who had no choice but to go out in the streets and march and fight for their rights. And they didn't just fight for their rights, they fought for the rights of the entire queer community. And it's because of them that I was able to take pride in my identity and truly love being queer. And it was also in this ability that I was able to learn the importance of knowing who it was that earned me the rights that I am able to enjoy today. I realized how could I enjoy my life as a privileged white cisgender gay man and not know why it's easier for me to live easier and come out easier than it is for others. So at a gay pride march in 1973, Sylvia Rivera talks about how she gave her life for gay liberation and she still was not able to enjoy the fruits of her labor. And to this day, her children still do not enjoy the fruits of her labor because somewhere along the way, this country, the queer community, decided that they don't fit in, that because some of them can't pass or they make it harder for the image of the movement that they can't be part of the group. And it was because of people like Harold Call and Marilyn Riger of the Madison Society, which was a uh, a gay liberation group uh, that was very prominent at the time that stood up against those who were more outward of showcasing their pride. They expected the quote unquote more faggoty ones to adapt so that they could all assimilate into the straight world. And it's because of these two and, and others like them that classism, homophobia, transphobia, permeated the queer community and still does to this day. They refused to recognize the fact that because of their black and brown trans brothers and sisters and queer folk, that they were able to move forward and progress and be recognized by the larger society. It is due to them to this day that we can enjoy the freedoms we have of marriage equality and the most recent ruling of Title VII of the Civil Rights Act finally including prohibiting discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity in employment. Those should be rights that we all should be able to enjoy and that we all should fight for as well. So, why is pride most important in this time now, more important than the ones we've celebrated in recent years? Well, it's because this pride, we are returning to the roots of pride. Pride was an unpermitted retaliation against police brutality and suppression 
there were riots and marches and standing up in the streets and fighting against those who had stifled queer people for so long, which is exactly what is going on in this country right now. We are fighting for our black and brown neighbors and making space for them and listening to their stories and doing everything in our power to make the world and the country a more equitable place for them. We are protecting our black and brown trans brothers and sisters because they are the most vulnerable in our community and it is our responsibility as queer people to do so. There is no normal pride. This right now is a normal pride. This is what pride should be. A reminder of where we come from and all the work we still have to do, but also a celebration of living as an outward expression of what we grew up believing was not a normal way of life. This pride is a reminder to all of us, queer or not, that the privileges we have or are fortunate to have after having people fought for them are not afforded to all. And it is our job to make this world, this country, so that they are. Especially when it's for the people who got you that performative, corporate-paid, Pride Week, Speedo, Yacht Party in the first place.